what is up guys welcome to the day 65 recap of the 2016-2017 NBA season. Alright so it became clear to me yesterday that some teams do need to make a trade. And the trade deadline is approaching. It's only around two months away now. This is about the time where your teams are like yo in this area we suck or we don't need this guy anymore so let's get rid of him or let's go get that guy we do need. These are the teams that I feel like you can expect to see some moves from this uh, trade season. The first one which I think is only a matter of time is the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic since last year have been making some pretty you know uh, questionable moves. They've been trading away their young talent for like older veterans or just quite frankly to release cap space like they did with Tobias Harris. Now they have also come out publicly to say that Nikola Vucevic and Alfred Payton are up for grabs. That's two more of their young players are up for trades. Two solid young players both coming off the bench now for whatever reason. Who knows what's going on down there in Orlando. Looking from their history of trading young players, I think that they're looking for veterans. Veterans that can play, which will lead me to the next team. Yo, the Detroit Pistons. So the Pistons lost again yesterday to the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm not upset or anything, but since Reggie Jackson returned, the Pistons have been struggling. So don't be surprised if you do see a Reggie Jackson trade. Now, Reggie Jackson isn't a bad player at all. He's, he's not. You know, he's a score first point guard, and that's the problem for the Pistons. When the Pistons have all these options that they have uh, to score in their starting five. All right, to score in the starting five, they need someone who can distribute the ball to the guys in a position where they are comfortable scoring. And that's just one thing Reddy Jackson hasn't gotten that comfortable at doing yet. And Alfred Payton, I feel, could be a guy that Stan Van Gundy looks at. An available point guard that's a pass-first point guard. He can also score. He's becoming a much better scorer this season. He's always been a pass-first point guard. So that's a guy where I think Stan Van Gundy can look to fill in that. Especially since Is Smith, who was also a pass-first point guard, you know, he was having the Pistons offense humming. And, you know, he was hitting the guys in all the right spots. And I think that's something that Alfred Payton could do, uh, given the time to learn the guys, that is. That's one possibility. And the other one is the Brooklyn Nets. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets. And the only trade asset the Brooklyn Nets really have is uh, Brooke Lopez. And I, and I strongly believe they will trade Brooke Lopez because it makes no sense to keep Brooke Lopez uh, in Brooklyn. And looking at teams that would actually, you know, want Brooke Lopez, um, he's not the best defensive center. He's not the best rebounding center. He's an offensive minded center. You know, he can make threes now. And if there is a team that I think will take him on, it would probably be the Orlando Magic. And the Brooklyn Nets will be looking for two things. They'll be looking for young talent or draft picks because, you know, they got rid of all of that in that trade with the Boston Celtics. They have no more draft picks. They have basically no young talent. That's the two things the Brooklyn Nets need. So the Magic are looking to get rid of young talent and maybe draft picks, who knows, in exchange for veterans aka Brooke Lopez. The Sixers are a matter of time as well, a matter of getting the offer they want for New Orleans Noel. Alright, New Orleans Noel has already came out vividly this season saying that he wants to be traded. He is not happy in Philly with the playtime he's getting because of the emergence of Joel Embiid and they also have Jaleel Okafor. So New Orleans Noel is basically got cut out of the rotation basically the entire rotation. He's very unhappy and I know a lot of teams would love to have Nerl as well. This is an athletic big man. He can block shots, he can get you some rebounds, so a lot of teams would love to have Nerl as well. So the price is going to be pretty high. So as much as Blazers fans I know would love to get him, I don't think they have what it takes to get him. One team I know could get him if they wanted him would be the Boston Celtics, but they've said that they're trying to trade for like a superstar only. You know, that player that really takes them to the next level because if they're going to get rid of those draft picks and they're Young talent it's only gonna be for a player that they feel is gonna help them win the championship they're not gonna do it for a player that maybe gets them to the second round maybe it gets them to the Eastern Conference Finals no because then you're trading away your future to get to the finals Boston Celtics are only gonna trade for a player who they feel yes this is a guy that can get us to that next level to get it they can get us to a championship contender so as far as where New Orleans Noel could land up it's really up in the air right now I mean it's whoever makes the best offer at this point and I don't know what the Sixers are asking for, so it's kind of hard. I mean, the Sixers need everything. They'll basically take anything, anything good. The only two real pieces they have set in stone are Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. So anything else, you know, is still up for filler. So, you know, it's the Sixers. Um, who knows what they're asking for? I mentioned the Blazers not being able to trade for New Orleans Noel most likely. All right, that's most likely not going to happen because I don't think they have the assets to land him. But the Blazers do need a rim protector. They could also use someone who's a great rebounder, but those are kind of hard to find and those cost a uh, pretty penny. But they could use a rim protector and a rim protector that could be up or trade that should be up or trade pretty cheaply 
It is Andrew Bogut. Andrew Bogut from the Dallas Mavericks. Yo, the Dallas Mavericks really have no use for Andrew Bogut, so they could look to move him for something like, you know, a bench prospect, someone who doesn't get much playing time, you know, a young player that doesn't get much playing time, and, and maybe a draft pick. So the Blazers can do that, but the Blazers need some veteran leadership and they need someone who's a rim protector. Andrew Bogut, if he can stay healthy, is a good rim protector. He's also a good uh, uh, screen setter. You know, he can set some good screens. I'm putting air quotation marks around that screen in case you didn't see. That will help free up Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum for some open jump shots like the, like he did for Klay Thompson and uh, Stephen Curry and Golden State. Speaking of Andrew Boga, another team I feel could be interested in his service is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Like the Blazers, the Minnesota Timberwolves could use some help in their um, defensive areas. I know Tom Thibodeau would absolutely love Andrew Bogut on the team and they also need a veteran. Andrew Bogut checks off both those uh, both those boxes. I think Andrew Bogut to the Timberwolves would greatly help because it would also help Carl Anthony Towns learn some more defensive. Andrew Bogut should show him around like how to guard the paint better because Carl Anthony Towns could become like an Anthony Davis, you know, a great rim protector as well as on the offensive end. So Andrew Bogut to the Timberwolves will make a lot of sense. In case you couldn't tell, that was inspired by a bunch of those teams going out and losing last night. Now let's get into the recap section of the video. The Toronto Raptors, you know, when it was like 44 to 17, I thought it was over. I honestly thought it was over, but they came back and made a game out of it. So congratulations to the Toronto Raptors for, for having some pride and not and going down swinging and putting up a great fight in the end. They lost to the Golden State Warriors, you know, 121 to 111. Kevin Durant at 22 points, 17 rebounds, and seven assists for the Golden State Warriors. 17 rebounds for Kevin Durant. Steph Curry chipped in with 28.7 rebounds and seven assists of his own, and Klay Thompson at 21 points for the Golden State Warriors. For the Toronto Raptors, Kyle Lowry at 27 points and 11 assists, DeMar DeRozan at 29 points, six assists, three steals, and Terrence Ross at 24 points off the bench. Like I said, they were down huge at the beginning of the game, but they came back to make a game out of it in the end, but they still fall to the Golden State Warriors for the second time this year. What goes around comes around Brooklyn. Yo, the Brooklyn Nets lost. The Brooklyn Nets lost to the Chicago Bulls off a of Jimmy Gets Buckets game winner. And if you guys remember, it was Randy Foy that hit a game winner against the Charlotte Hornets. And now Jimmy Butler says, yo, anything y'all can do, I can do better. Yo, Jimmy Butler went off for 40 points last night. Jimmy Butler's still been having a fantastic season, but the Chicago Bulls just haven't been able, as of late especially, just haven't been able to rack up too many wins. Come on, guys. Lopez twins, get your acts together. Look, Brooke Lopez, you went and posterized your own brother, your own flesh and Blood, you did to him what you've been done to so many times this year. Even though Brooke Lopez got a W for this one, uh, the family the family still winds up taking an L. So 2016 really needs to end for the Lopez twins. John Wall was one assist shy of a triple double. Normally you would think it'd be the other way around. He'd be one rebound shy or maybe even one point shy of a triple double, but no, but one assist shy of a triple double. 36 points, nine assists, and 11 rebounds for John Wall as the Washington Wizards beat the Indiana Pacers. <laughs> Carmelo Anthony got himself ejected for a flagrant two foul against Tabo Cephalosha. Yo, he kind of hit Tabo Cephalosha and then he got himself ejected. And the New York Knicks lost in overtime to the Atlanta Hawks, 102 to 98. Dwight Howard had 16 points and 22 rebounds. Dwight Howard is still having a really good year when he plays. Dennis Schroeder had 27 points for the Atlanta Hawks. Chris Paul returned for the Los Angeles Clippers. Normally this would be a great time for Clippers fans. You know, you would think they would get the win over the New Orleans Pelicans when Chris Paul returns. You would think, but I guess JJ Redick and Blake Griffin is still, no, that's not, that's, that's, that's not true. They, they should still have been able to beat the New Orleans Pelicans. They're still a much more talented team than the New Orleans Pelicans, but they lost. 102 to 98. This was supposed to be a really easy schedule for the Los Angeles Clippers. Four teams in a row with sub 500 records, and they dropped all four of the games. It's not like Anthony Davis even had like a monster game. You know, Anthony Davis only had 20 points and five rebounds, three steals, and two blocks. Still a good game, but not too many rebounds. But you know, still a good game, but not up to Anthony Davis standards. But you know, the Clippers. Uh, that's kind of that's. Uh, it, I'm sorry. That, that's kind of that's just kind of bad. The Milwaukee Bucks beat my Detroit Pistons. They did. They just smallest my Detroit Pistons last night. All right, uh, 119 to 94. So Jabari and Giannis were too much for the Pistons to handle, especially Jabari Parker. 31 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists. So you're talking about two players that are walking, almost having triple doubles every night. Yo, Giannis and Jabari. Giannis onto the Kumpo at 23 points, eight assists, and five rebounds. And you know that duo 
is going to be, it's, it's already really, really freaking good, but it's only gonna get better and better and better. And it's gonna be scary good soon because those two have such great chemistry together already. And to think this is basically only their second year playing together and they already had this kind of chemistry. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like four or five years down the road when these players aren't in their prime. It's gonna be freaking scary. And then the Bucks will most likely have more talent around them by then too. Their, their motto right now is own the future and that's what it's looking like for the Milwaukee Bucks. Carl Anthony Towns had a triple double, but the uh, but the Denver Nuggets got the win in a nail biter. In a nail biter, all right, 105 to 103. Danilo Gallinari hit a shot with like 20 some seconds left, and then Wilson Chandler swats away Andrew Wiggins' layup with like eight seconds left, I believe it was, that would have tied the game, and that wound up sealing the game for the Denver Nuggets. Carl Anthony Towns triple double, 15 points, I think it was 11 rebounds and 10 assists. Before before the Denver Nuggets, yo, Jokic almost had a triple double of his own. Yo, Nikola Jokic almost had a triple double. He had 16 points, 11 assists, and eight rebounds. The Trailblazers got the win. The Trailblazers got a freaking win without Damian Lillard, surprisingly. So they lost to the Raptors in a close game without Damian Lillard, and they went out and beat the, the Sacramento Kings without Damian Lillard. I'm not saying, now anyone saying that the Damian, this team is better off with Damian Lillard, just uh, slap yourself one time. Slap yourself one good time, because that's just ridiculous. The Charlotte Hornets beat the Orlando Magic 120 to 101 last night. Kemba Walker had 21 points, and Nick Batum almost had another triple double with 20 points, 8 assists, and 9 rebounds. And last but not least, the San Antonio Spurs went out and destroyed the Phoenix Suns, yo, 119 to 98. Of course, this is what you could expect to happen from the San Antonio Spurs beat the Phoenix Suns, even without Kawhi Leonard, who was out due to gastronitis. Gastronitis, of all things, taking out Kawhi Leonard for a game. Lamarcus Aldridge led the way with 27 points, and Paul Gasol chipped in with 16 points and 10 rebounds, and Tony Parker had his best game of the season, yo, his best game of the season with 20 points and 3 assists. Hopefully, Tony Parker can chip in more games like this, especially when it comes to the playoffs. That about wraps up all the action of the day 65 recap of the 2016-2017 NBA season. Let me know what you guys thought about those trades down in the comment section below. Let me know what teams you guys think are going to make some trades down in the comment section below. What players you guys think are going to get traded. Like the video if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more daily NBA videos. And until tomorrow, keep getting the buggers team SDC and I'm out of here. Peace!